It is feared all over Europe. The bombers, the fighters, and the screaming dive bombers that have played such big parts in Germany's successes of the war. But the Luftwaffe is now facing its greatest challenge, the invasion of the Soviet Union. And just what is the state of the Luftwaffe these days? Let's have a look. I'm Indy Nidell. This is a World War II in real time special episode about the Luftwaffe at the beginning of Operation Barbarossa, the invasion of the Soviet Union. The success of the German Blitzkrieg depended firstly on the role of its armored formations, with aircraft and the formula of close air support forming an important second. And the Luftwaffe does, and has in fact, practiced close integration with the army and armor. As we see, now that Barbarossa is happening, there are three broad sorts of aircraft Germany is using. Fighters, bombers, and dive bombers. The fighters are, of course, used to gain air superiority, protect the bombers, and strafe ground targets. They've got the single-engine Messerschmitt BF-109s and the twin-engine BF-110s. Now, they don't have so many of the latter, a heavy fighter, and it's not as maneuverable, but those do have a far longer range than the 109s. That's kind of a big deal in the big open spaces of the Soviet Union. The Luftwaffe does not, however, have an effective long-range bomber. The development of one was too much of a strain on already somewhat limited resources. And the German planes in general are better for tactical use than strategic. Anyhow, the bombers they'll use in Barbarossa are twin-engined light and medium bombers. And they do have a fairly limited range. These include the light Dornier DO-17Z, the Junkers Ju-88, which serves also for night fighting and recon, and the Heinkel 111s, which we've seen a lot of. The standard German dive bomber is the Screamin' Stuka, the Ju-87. When these are well protected, they can be extremely accurate, and the screaming of their air brakes has a serious psychological effect on civilians on the ground. But, since there are no great shakes in terms of speed or weapons, without protection, they are in real trouble. In fact, in the Battle of Britain last summer, they were taken out of service there early on, since they suffered such heavy losses so quickly. Since the invasion of Western Europe began last May, the Luftwaffe has been in pretty much continuous service. This is in contrast to the German army. And if you start with the early May 1940 total Luftwaffe strength before the Battle of France, and then look from just May to September, losses of single-engine fighters were 57%, twin-engine fighters 94%, bombers 64%, and dive bombers 50%. Of course, new planes were entering service, but that would still have been unsustainable over a long period of time, or should the Luftwaffe be further committed in other theaters of war. Last October, Hoffmann von Faldau, Chief of Luftwaffe Operations, told Army Chief of Staff Franz Halder that they simply had to scale back operations against Britain over the winter, that numbers would not be back up to strength until 1941, and that the Luftwaffe fighting a two-front war versus both Britain and the Soviet Union was impossible. Well, that was in October. Hitler's directive for Barbarossa from December says this. The Air Force will have to make available for this Eastern campaign supporting forces of such strength that the Army will be able to bring land operations to a speedy conclusion, and that Eastern Germany will be as little damaged as possible by enemy air attack. This buildup of a focal point in the East will be limited only by the need to protect from air attack the whole combat and arsenal area which we control and to ensure that attacks on England are not allowed to lapse. The attacks on Britain were reduced beginning in the fall, but the Luftwaffe still kept losing planes, though it reached its minimum of that in January, losing 4.8% of the bomber force and 2.1% of the fighters. David Stehel has this to say about the idea of continuing the attack on Britain in 1941 along the lines of 1940. It seems absurd to believe that those efforts could be matched in 1941, while at the same time embarking on a war with the scale and scope of Barbarossa. To make matters worse, in late 1940, Air Corps 10 was being transferred to the Mediterranean, leading the Luftwaffe towards a three-front war by the summer of 1941. And they also had to operate in the invasions of Greece, Yugoslavia, and Crete. And in order to cover up their plans for the East and convince Joseph Stalin that 
they were going to focus on Britain, Luftwaffe operations against Britain were really ramped up this spring. So by May, fighters are losing 6.8% and bombers 12% of their force. In total, from August 1st last year until June this year, the Luftwaffe lost some 3,700 planes, about the same number of flying crewmen killed, with another 3,000 missing. By June 1941, over 1,500 planes are tied down in Africa, Western Europe, the Balkans, and the Mediterranean. Well, now they're fighting the Soviet Union as well. They did very much underestimate the number of planes the Soviets could field. But training and quality really offset the Soviet numerical advantage. However, the Soviets have a much larger industrial base, so they'll be able to replace aircraft far quicker in the long run. The Luftwaffe estimated that the Red Air Force had 5,800-ish planes in the European theater, but that only 1,300 bombers and 1,500 fighters would be fully operable. The Soviets have, in fact, over 7,000 planes in the western part of the country and thousands more further east. The Luftwaffe were, though, correct in their thoughts about Red Air Force training, tactics, and command structure. And early on in Barbarossa, we did see devastating losses taken by the Soviet Air Force. But you know, the Luftwaffe does not have a very good planes to space ratio in this operation. So they have to carefully pick where to offer aerial support. And that means there are areas where the Soviet planes don't have any aerial enemies of their own to worry about. And the Luftwaffe has a shortage of transport planes. We saw that in just the invasion of Crete, they lost 151 transports, and that is a lot, especially with the massive supply and logistical problems Germany is having in the huge open spaces of the Soviet Union. You can really see this in the air support that Army Group Center had from the beginning of the campaign. Now, it was the largest of the three army groups and the main thrust. So all 425 dive bombers deployed in Barbarossa are with Army Group Center, flying with Luftflotte 2 in its support. That Luftflotte has two air corps, eight and two. Eight is the larger of the two and has supported Hermann Hoth's Panzer Group Three. But that Air Corps had seen heavy action in Crete just a month ago and had not really had time to transfer and prepare afterwards. So the day before Barbarossa began, it was still missing 40% of its planes and a lot of communications equipment. Corps Commander Wolfram von Richthofen, and if that name seems familiar, yes, the Red Baron was his cousin, specifically noted June 21st that his units were unready. In fact, of those 425 dive bombers, just 323 were service ready. And if you look at all aircraft in Luftwaffe 2, they had 1,367 of them, but only 994 ready for combat action. And along the entire front, with 2,995 total planes, a quarter of them were not ready for combat. Just 2,255 were. So this is all pretty major coming just at the beginning of the biggest invasion in history. If you happen to be on Germany's side, you may well hope that they can keep up or massively increase production of new aircraft and the number of trained personnel to operate them. I think I will end today with another Stahel quote, because he has a really good turn of the phrase, you might have noticed. By the summer of 1941, it was clear the Luftwaffe was only going to meet its obligations if the war in the East could be won quickly and without substantial losses, either for practical reasons such as the availability of oil or for strategic considerations concerning Britain, a long campaign was simply untenable. The Luftwaffe was already engaged in a multi-front war which was tying down some 1,566 aircraft in Western Europe, the Mediterranean, North Africa, and Germany. The major dispersion of strength to theaters of secondary importance prevented concentration on the most important front and the one with the smallest window for success. Do not worry, there will be a special about the Red Air Force as well. Now, if you want to see more aviation, we did an episode about civilian aviation during the interwar years over on our Time Ghost channel, and you can check that out right here. And please support us by joining the Time Ghost Army at patreon.com or timeghost.tv. Do not forget to subscribe and ring that bell, and I'll see you next time.